broken record here, kind of like Andrew. All Andrew does is complain and bust on people. All I'm doing is complaining and busting on Andrew, okay? Yo, one of my favorite things to do is to watch people make videos on me. I make videos on people all day and I like to watch people that make videos on me talk about what I'm talking about. We keep the whole circle going, the conversation's on fire. That brings me to Clay Hamilton, the guy who runs the YouTube page called Old Guy Inc. He's got an Instagram, it's Clay underscore old dot guy dot Inc. He's got a YouTube page, it's Old Guy Inc. I'm going to link the video into the description where he's talking about me in the first place. And the thing about all of this is, believe it or not, I do have a full-time job. I have about a dozen clients, give or take, at any given time where I'm running them through one-on-ones. I've got the online program and I do have a lot going on trying to keep up with the entire world. This video was made eight days ago. That's the whole point of me saying all of this. I was showing it this morning and in the point in time in which the video was initially made and the point in time in which I viewed it, Clay has made a couple more videos on me. I think I may have lost Clay in relation to those last two videos. So if you want to go and see those, go ahead. I'm going to show you the first one that I watched. It's the 18 minute version of it. I'm going to try and chop it up so it's a little bit shorter so I can fit it all together. But within it, Clay seemed hopeful. And then in the next couple of days, he seemed to lose all faith. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I've done in the past. I'm going to play a little bit of the clip and I'm going to go ahead and expand upon what he is saying in his video. First of all, sweet voice. A few times within the YouTube, he says that he doesn't have any sort of a presence. He doesn't know what he wants to do. He doesn't have a brand brand around your freaking voice, dude. It's incredible. It's like, rah! he talks about my eyebrows all the time. They do whatever they want. But the voice, dude, go with the voice. Here we go. Hey, Andrew Hiller, Batman. Uh, Clay here from Old Guy Inc. Wanting to just challenge you and uh, talk a little bit about the negativity game. So I know. All right. So right off the bat, Clay says that he wants to challenge me. What do you mean you want to challenge me? Do you even watch my videos? I watch your videos. I know, because you always say that. I love you. I'm a fan. Love you too, Clay Hamilton. I'm subscribed. I'm all about the call outs and the no reps and trying to hold athletes and CrossFit accountable. High five, check. We are on the same page. However, I am going to just talk a little bit about a little bit of difference in philosophy. So I love tons of of the information that you're putting out there. It starts conversations. It gets guys like me involved in the conversation. And for that, I applaud you and I think it's all good. I do think uh, personally that you blow off the negativity talks a little too much and you seem to always blame it on, well, obviously this person just doesn't watch my videos and obviously this person doesn't watch my videos. Okay. I watch your videos and I understand that you do try to offer solutions um, a lot of the times. So I'm not here to say that, but don't accuse me of being one of those people who's not informed, doesn't watch your videos, doesn't understand that you also do things like post videos about Patrick Vellner and you show how to do things correctly and I'm with you. We should be putting those people up uh, on a pedestal and so should CrossFit. However, brother, Batman, okay, you and your eyebrows, man, you are negative, okay? And this is what I mean. All right, so here's the deal. About five or six months ago, I probably had about 500 subscribers and they're probably all people that I would just wander into at an event or at the gym, whatever. If you were to have taken a poll at that point in time, if is Andrew a negative person, I think that it would have been something like 90% would have said no. If you could put that poll out right now, I would have to venture to bet that it's about 20% of the people would say no, and 80% would think that I am indeed a negative person. Very weird for me to hear. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story. A story that no one has to believe because this is the internet and everything is a lie, right? Everything's a lie, but it's a real story. I used to go to Chipotle four or five times a week. When you go to somewhere like Chipotle four or five times a week over the course of, I don't know, years at a time, it's rice, it's meat, it's great fast food if you just wanna eat something that's relatively clean, that's my opinion. But as I go to this place over and over again at about the same time being at the affiliate, you would wander in and see the same people. These people would make fun of me for being way too freaking positive. I'd walk in, I'd say, hey, how you doing? And they'd say, oh, I had a terrible night, I got no sleep. And I go, well, at least you got some sleep. They'd say things like, oh, we've been swamped today. It's a good time for you to come in. I go, well, it probably made the time fly by pretty quick. And they'd say, what's wrong with you? Why do you always just combat us with this positive energy? Say, Mr. Brightside, get out of here with all that. They'd make fun of me. It was all in good 
good humor, I think. I think so. They'd give me free food here and there, so I could tell that they didn't hate me. So sure, it's weird that at this point in my life, 30 years old, sitting on the internet, people are saying, you're so negative, you're so negative. And I understand why. I mean, duh, look at the freaking titles that I put on the internet. But there is an end goal. And I think I'm going to talk more about that end goal at some other point in this video. There's always a reason for all of this. And as far as blowing off the negativity, blowing off people's perspective of me, you can always tell when somebody has done research on a topic that they're talking about. And Clay, I can tell that you have indeed watched the videos. You know what I'm talking about. You know what's going on. You've dissected the whole thing all the way through. Or and maybe you didn't dissect it, but at least you heard what had to be said. And that's what's important. And when I've discredited people in the past for the things that they've had to say, mainly talking about the Talking Elite Fitness thing, you can tell that maybe they looked at the clickbait, maybe they read the title, maybe they got through the first minute or two, and then they missed the entire meat of it. And because they missed the meat of what I was talking about, they don't understand the entire idea of the message. That's usually when I start to discredit people. It'd be like if you looked at a book that said Algebra 2, and you're like, oh, algebra is stupid, and that was the end of your argument. You don't look in the book, and you can't say anything about division, long division, Pythagorean theorem, or any of that crap. How to find the circumference of a fucking circle, that sort of thing, you know? That's geometry, whatever. You understand what I'm trying to say. So I don't discredit people right immediately. I try to discredit them when they don't seem to have done their research, which you have done. So good for you, Clay. Again, love you, Clay. Nice job. I understand that if you want to get subscriptions, subscribers, followers, and attention on social media, everybody who knows anything about social media knows that all of the analytics promote conflict and arguing in comments. These uh, computer-based software systems are incredibly good and they know when things are negative, they know keywords and when things are becoming argumentative. And the more you can do that with clickbait, the more controversy you can stir, the more likes you will get. Your channel's blowing up, props to you. My channel is, I'm literally, yesterday was my one month. I don't even know what my goal was when I started and I still don't know, I really don't. I mean, this it's not something I am looking to do as some sort of full-time job. I literally just got on here to share some of my knowledge and some of my thoughts, so. Clay, the thing about clickbait is that I think that there's gotta be a range of clickbait. And when I make my things up, I like to think that at least it's got some sort of correlation between what I'm talking about. I think some people are starting to look at it and go, okay, he's probably gonna talk about something in relation to that, but maybe it's not precisely that. If people don't get that, well, I'm saying it right here, that's the goal. And you also understand that the algorithm works a little bit better when there's a lot of stuff going on in the comment section. Then YouTube will throw it on some random people's homepage, maybe it'll get some more clicks, and clicks are what are going to drive the traffic, and that's all good stuff. Pump up the SEO, right? One thing I do want to suggest to you, man, is that I want 100,000 subscribers. I want to do everything I can to get to 100,000 subscribers. My goals are also to put like a video a day. You are a CrossFit coach. I think at some point you say you've been doing it since 2007. You own an affiliate. You know that goals are the basis of everything. Give yourself a goal. Hit that freaking goal. Let's get after it, man. I have been doing CrossFit since 2007. I opened one of the first 300 affiliates worldwide, CrossFit Alaska, in 2008. Since then, I've gone on to own three different CrossFit affiliates. Uh, I still coach to this day. I've hosted over 30 in-person um, CrossFit competitions. So I have done tons and tons of programming for affiliates and for competitions. That's not even counting my online competitions. I hosted the 2010 sectionals and programmed for that. I am by no means some sort of a program expert, but this is kind of what made me jump on here. And I'm just gonna kind of do this, dude. I mean, I, I understand where you're going, but to call the semifinal programming trash, I mean, who are you trying to help with that? The programming's not trash, okay? It's just, it's not trash, okay? You think it's trash and you're so entitled to your opinion and you are entitled to call it dog shit, garbage, trash and do whatever you want to do. Clay is a pretty successful dude. He ran CrossFit Alaska, three other affiliates. He said he ran 30 competitions. That's more competitions than I've ever run. So I would have to venture to bet that Clay probably has a better headspace, maybe more insight towards how to program for these competitions. Does he know how to program at the semifinal level? I don't know. When I pull about my knowledge looking at a team competition at the semifinal level, I just look back to regionals. I look to other semifinal events and I think, what are the best ever? He doesn't think they're trash. 
I think that the Mac team programming in particular was trash. I think that the individual programming syndicate was a little bit lacking. Did everybody seem to kind of filter the way that it should? I don't know. Maybe Ben Smith should have had a better finish. I think he is one of the fittest on earth. I think his brother Alex should have had a better finish. We talked about how it was machine, 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 machine. It seems like the people who did the machines the best kind of had the better finish towards the top at the end of the weekend. That's an insight towards the how it looked after for me. But I talked about having a goal and like wanting to have an idea of what it is we're going for here. And I know that a lot of us have probably seen Happy Gilmore. You, need, you know that. Imagine your happy place. Look at your happy place. Grandma wants me to be happy. Shut up, happy. Don't feel bad about me. So in my head, my happy place is CrossFit is picking up 50 to 100,000 people a year every year in the open. You just keep on going. Everyone's moving well. Everybody's scores are getting invalidated. Everyone's doing it the right way. You know that if you're in a, in a gym and there's 10 million people doing CrossFit, you know that there's enough people over at CrossFit that give a shit. 10 million people in the open. If you're one person in a bumfuck gym in the middle of nowhere doing a no rep and you have to put a video in because you want to go to the semifinals or regionals or whatever the hell they call it in the next five to 10 years, you know that if somebody at CrossFit is going to see that video, they have the right then to invalidate a video. That's going to keep everybody accountable. Dropping the hammer on the people who are doing things the wrong way. That's all. Because right now the conversation is, oh, how much can I get away with before they do drop the hammer? If there is even a hammer to drop. And that's a pretty messed up thing to think. And it's frustrating for those people who are doing it the right way and have always been doing it the right way. But that's all. Just like you can uh, do this. CrossFit already fucked up semifinals. Yikes. I mean, 57 times CrossFit fucked up. CrossFit has fucked up based on a true story. I mean, really? Like, is that the appropriate approach? I don't think so. It does seem to be working for you and your viewership. What I'm asking is, are you really helping CrossFit? I'm not going to lie, when he <laughs> was doing that the first time, I was actually dying laughing. CrossFit has fucked up, and he's just saying it, and I was dying laughing. I actually was. And he asked if it's actually the right approach, and I just keep on saying I want as many eyeballs on what I have to say, so that when push comes to shove and I have to say something important, I think that the more people hear the things that are important, the better. Are all the little idiosyncrasies important and are a lot of them negative or seem negative when you look at them? Sure. But I would just say, hey, Clay, come live with me and see the way that we go about things over here. And I know not many people do, but it's just basically my, me, my fiance, and the dogs. And they know that I don't really want to burn the whole thing to the freaking ground. That'd be dumb. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have the answer. I'm not saying that you're not. What I'm hoping is that even though I don't have very many subscribers, that I can get some input from my few subscribers, right? I think I'm at like 120. Uh, so it's a very small audience. I think now is a good time to go subscribe to Clay's channel because I see a lot of potential in him. He is, if anything, trying to do the exact same thing that I'm trying to do, but he's trying to do it from a more positive point of view. Sure, I do it this way and I say brash things and it's all off the cuff, but we're gonna pause and we're gonna go to the link I put in the description, subscribe to Clay's channel, watch the whole video because I cut this thing up a little bit. It deserves to have a full watch. Go get it. support. So what I mean by that is I think we should call out athletes and CrossFit in a respectable manner and showcase what is being publicized um, when we see things that we disagree with and things that are no reps. And I, and I think we should talk about that. Do I think we should call programming trash? Do I think we should do clickbait headlines and say uh, CrossFit is fucked up? Now, hey, guess what? 
guilty as charged. I'm still trying to find my way on YouTube. And so I did a video where I said CrossFit has lost their way. But then I immediately followed that up with my own um, opinion on semifinals. And I love semifinals. I, I love them. Does it mean if I was in charge, I would program the same way? No. Do I think workouts could be better? Yeah, but that's just my opinion. I think they did a great job. I, I love the format. I have no problem with the repeat workout. I know that it's a super quick workout, but I think that's great. There's tons of sports that happen in a short duration of time and all, I mean, have you been like watching any of the track and field lately? So I know exactly what Clay's talking about here. He's talking about, let's talk about things in a more productive fashion. Let's not talk about it and yelling at people and calling people out and blowing up their pages. But there's a reason that he's making a video on me right now. Clay's making a video on me and he's doing so because of the fashion in which I've been doing all of this. Sure, there was a point in time I would say I was 22 years old. You could look at my YouTube channel. Go all the way back. First video on there was me doing push-ups. I got some stuff for me in college doing some how to do a power clean. I used to say the word queen because I had a little bit of a lisp. I would say power queen. And it was always a huge joke to a bunch of people who would watch these videos that I would make. Since I started making these videos, I figured that as long as you were doing things the right way and you're doing them PC, nobody really wanted to watch it. And yeah, I do agree with Clay. We need to have a discussion about these things. But the thing is, is that the powers that may be the morning chalk ups of the world, the talking elite fitnesses of the world, they're not going to talk about it. In steps somebody like me who wants to talk about this stuff. And the only way that I'm going to get the exact same number of eyes on my channel that talking elite fitness or the morning chalk up or CrossFit games has is that I go about using these methods. I know you seem to understand this a little bit, Clay. And I know you said you just started up your YouTube YouTube channel, but I've been doing this for a long time, and this is just kind of what I found in the long time that I've been doing it, man. I think you're going too much towards the negativity, and I think all that does is help people who are trying to bash CrossFit take what you're saying and misconstrue it and dump on CrossFit more. So I don't think that your goal is to dump on CrossFit. That's why I'm confused. I believe from what I've seen of your videos on CrossFit that you're very knowledgeable, that you offer up good points, you do your research, and you're trying to be entertaining to some degree, which is fine. I'm not an entertainer, okay? I don't have huge eyebrows. All right, I got huge eyebrows. They do whatever they want, and I love that people talk about my freaking eyebrows. But here's the thing. You don't have to be an entertainer. Maybe I. Maybe you do have to be an entertainer. I don't know. Maybe you have to be an entertainer. Big thing that Clay brings up right here is the fact that he doesn't think that CrossFitters should be bashing on CrossFit. Now, this might be a weird fucked up circle that I'm about to go through, but I don't really think so because CrossFit has always been a self-policing community. That has slowly gone away, the self-policing part of it. And the big thing that I always talk about is the fact that they removed the ability to judge the leaderboard. People upload their videos and the judges would say whether or not they were acceptable or unacceptable. We would self-police on the leaderboard. You would self-police in the gyms. And it was almost because of that self-policing where you would call people out on their shit that we would get so defensive when people would say things in CrossFit were stupid. So if there was someone in a Globo gym talking shit about CrossFit, you would be offended because you know that that's not the way that it works. You can't talk shit about us. We do everything about as well as you could possibly do things. What do you not understand? We're the fittest people on earth. How could you say those things about us? So the reason that I, a CrossFitter, am now picking upon some of the things that CrossFit is deploying is because it has lost that a little bit and I want it back. The goal is not to have the outsiders talking shit about CrossFit and the insiders talking shit about CrossFit. The goal is to have the CrossFitters looking at the things that are bad and then all of a sudden say, oh yeah, we don't like that. We gotta make sure that no one in our community looks like that. It's almost like that giant bubble that they put up around that town in Black Panther. It's like a giant bubble that keeps all the bullshit out. It's like, oh, you see bullshit? Throw it outside the bubble. I am not a fan of Morning Chalk Up. I do not think they are unbiased news. Um, I think you are unbiased if you watch all of your videos at the heart of you. But in general, the videos that you have that get the most attention, I believe paint CrossFit in a very negative light. They're very challenging. Um, I just don't think if you like something and you're trying to support something, you should ever drop F-bombs and say that it's fucked up. I don't think you should say it's trash. Hey, if that's what you think, and that's what you want to say, that's fine. Um, I don't think it helps. 
So Clay right here talks about how he thinks that the morning chalk up is biased reporting. He thinks that I am not biased reporting. I try to do everything I can to look at something, formulate an opinion based upon only things that I've seen, not any sort of presupposition that I've had about that said thing. It's a big driving thing that I do. I don't want to seem biased. I try to do what I can to look at it as if I were anyone in the world and looking at something and then going about it with a little bit of research that he also seems. So I've cut out quite a bit of this video right here. He has a 20 minute video. I've already told you, go ahead and watch the whole thing if you have have the time to do so i hope you do and there's a big pause in there it sounds like he's really struggling to go ahead and appreciate what i'm doing here he says that he doesn't think that you should go ahead and say things are fucked up you don't think things should be brash i have a dog i have a pit bull the pit bull I love the pit bull. It's the greatest thing ever. There was a picture. Uh, Alexis put it on the Instagram. Actually, I'm just sitting there covering with the pit bull. The first night that we had her, she, we put her in the cage. We were going to bed. She's like, ah! And I went into that cage, and I put the fear of God into that dog. I'm like, you are not going to be doing this. Never again. You know what happened? She never made a noise at night ever again unless there was something outside, and she barked at it. You know, that, hey, good dog. You're barking at the stuff that's outside. And... If I were one of those parents who had a freaking dog and just, oh, it's okay, just, oh, I'm going to coddle you, you know what it's going to do? It's going to keep on barking. It's going to bark in the middle of the night. It's going to do it because it knows that when it barks, you're going to come and give it attention. You're, and that's all the dog wants. The dog wants attention. You know, the dog doesn't want, it doesn't want the fear of God put into it. Like, you shut up! Kago! Kago! Yeah, so this is the pit bull. You've all seen the pit bull. This is the love of my life, this little girl. Yeah, look at this little girl. Isn't she adorable? So, she is only as good as she is because of something like, oh, you can't bark in the middle of the night. Look at that face. Oh, yeah, you're on the camera. That's a good yawn, huh? All right, so... The reason that I'm so aggressive because I think that aggressiveness causes change. I think that a lot of people have had that resonating with them. Clay, you're the man. Thank you for so much for making a video. I'm so sorry that it took me a couple of days to get back to you on these things. I wish that I would have seen it immediately. And I hope that something I've said or done in this video can help bring you back on the good side. Not thinking that I'm just trying to bring down everything that we love so much. Andrew Hiller and Kygo, out. We're out. Thank you. <laughs>